everyone, welcome to Pouring Takes. I'm Charlie Van. And I am Rhea. Charlie, look at us. We're on a road trip this week. We are outside of the like Dallas city limits, essentially. This uh, is this North Dallas? North is this Dallas. Farmers Branch? Is this North Addison? Dallas. I don't even know. Yeah, this is North Dallas. This is Addison. Um, we are here at the Irishman. Uh, super exciting. Love the environment. Love the couches here. <laughs> yeah, I do. These, this is very comfy. I love, I love when bars have like these little socializing areas, little lounging spots. I feel like after a few though, you'd be like, hard not to me. keep awake. <laughs> not me. I'm not. A, I'm not a sleep drinker. You're not I'm a sleep a, drinker. I'm a. Go You've seen this. I just keep going. I'm energized about the man, the machine, the machine. Yeah, no, we're we're glad to be out here at the Irishman. Uh, Wednesdays is uh, Whiskey Wednesday, four fifty. Great Ooh. deal, great variety on their whiskey. And then Friday nights, come get your singing on for karaoke at eight o'clock. So yeah, they got a lot of great events going on. I always love coming into. I, just, I don't know. I've, I love Irish, you know, pubs. Uh, I love the environment. Obviously, they're very sports influenced. And as a beer drinker. Uh, so many varieties. I was going to say, I believe this place is on, like, the list of, like, English Premier League bars. Mm -hmm. So I believe they open early on the weekends for you to watch soccer, if that's something you're interested in. Well, and I'm sure uh, you'll probably see some rugby as well. Uh, so it's always festive and, of course, around St. Patrick's oh, yeah. weekend. Come on down here. And speaking of drinking, what are you drinking? So I decided to go with a draft beer for once. I mix it up. I mean, outside of our Texas Tuesdays. Um, but I am drinking a Kona Big Wave. I love Kona Big Wave. It is a great, I mean, it's a great beer no matter what year round, but definitely summertime. And Very there was, easy. There was a part of me, though, like with this weather. So here we were here Tuesday night. It's been rainy on and off all day. It's about 80 mm. degrees outside right now, which kind of felt chilly. I was like, maybe I should have worn a hoodie today. <laughs> um, false fall, as our producer Tanner told me on the way <laughs> yes, over false here. False fall. False fall is totally a thing. Don't buy into it. <laughs> it's a tease. So you're saying it was pouring today for us here on Pouring Takes. Drink. Um, but I was in between getting a beer or maybe a glass of wine. Mm. Um, also, they have a ton of cocktail specials in here. So, they do. But I, I did go with the beer. I didn't want to be the odd man out. <laughs> you and Tanner got yourself draft beers too. What'd you get? Well, I got... What's one of my go-to is Harp Lager, great Irish Lager. Always when I see it on tap, have to go for it. It's usually that or Smithix, but um, it's definitely a Harp Lager kind of day. So, no, I love it. What about you, Tanner? What are you drinking? Well, I wanted to get this, but I forgot to tell Charlie in time. This is a really There you go. Very Irish. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. Uh, they, no, there's there's so many. I mean, I'm looking at the taps. Uh, they were saying, what would you want? I'm like, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. And, of course, saw a hard blogger. I sampled uh, a red ale, actually. Oh, did you? Just well, now? Yeah, just that now. Was right quick. We, yeah, because I was curious. Yeah, no, I, I Bar love red ale. was super nice. Like, I just came up there, and I was like, dude, I don't know what I want. And he was like, what do you like? And I was like, I like to drink. <laughs> That's a good answer he here. Goes, That's very vague. And I could tell he was getting like impatient with me, but he, he hung in there, walked me through a couple um, choices they had between IPAs and all kinds of stuff, um, ciders, whatever. And uh, eventually saw the Kona Big Wave, and I was like, oh, I haven't had one of these in a while, so I'm going to roll with that. Yeah, no, you can't go wrong with Kona. Yeah, I know a lot of great options here, a lot of great stuff. You know, like you said, the specials. I mean, the, just looking through the menu, so many great specials, and like you said, the cocktails um, as well. So, Rhea, this is um, always our favorite, maybe sometimes our favorite part to kick with, and sometimes not our favorite part. But today it's our favorite part because nothing's happened yet. That is true. It is. So we're building, building up for what is week one. It is finally here. Felt like it. It wasn't too long ago they were talking about NFL Week 1, and now it's back for the 2024 season. Um, before we quickly get into the matchups and, and just talk about, obviously, our matchup, the Cowboys and the Browns real quick, what, what excites you the most about Week 1 football? I have something to do Thursdays, Sundays, and Mondays, and I – live for it and fantasy football yes yes which we gotta have our draft still. we have our draft tomorrow yeah oh yeah it is wednesday tomorrow man yeah, having right. a day off like just throws i have two drafts at the same time tomorrow night so thoughts and prayers are super appreciated well hopefully they're not rough drafts drink 
Yeah, I, I think that. And then um, I actually, I, I did this a week early. I, I went out for the college football Saturday this yeah. past weekend. I went to my old stomping ground, Barley House, um, to catch the beginning of, I forgot what game it was, because SMU didn't play until later at night. Mm. But I was just going through my, my college football bar rotation, and I went to Barley House, and I got my wings, my bone-in, super saucy buffalo wings. Because you liked it saucy. I have to have it extra saucy, okay? Um, with ranch, not blue cheese. Even though I'm from the north, I know I'm still southern at heart. I, I need ranch, not blue cheese. But, yeah. Chicken wings, and you know how much I love my chicken wings, specifically my bone-in chicken wings. You are a wing woman. I um, am a wing woman. Yeah, no that's dogs. what I'm saying. They are like nuggets. Oh, to be fair, for a long time, I like to I find that something way. hard inside. Drink. <laughs> she was waiting for that. Oh, all the bone up. Um. But uh, no, Barley House is always a great time, especially for your alma mater, SMU. Yep. I mean, this, I mean, we don't always talk a lot of college football, but the the Stangs are up 2-0 right now. Yep, yep, we're 2-0. We have played. Uh, who did we play? Nevada, which was a total nail biter, mm -hmm. which shouldn't have been a nail biter, but it was the return of Sexy Presti coming off a big leg injury. Um, and then we blew out Houston Christian last week, and mm, on Friday night, right. Friday night lights, all Reds. We've got BYU. So loads to be excited about. Hey, but going up 2-0 just into momentum, it's, uh, well, it's, it's better than I, – I don't know if I can co completely claim this thing because I didn't really have a college football team, but, you know, I root for what is in the family. And poor Florida State, rough start 0-2. And, you know, and here's the thing. My dad, you know, as diehard as we know, he is a Cowboys fan. He is that much diehard Florida State where he can't watch – a Florida State game. The one game he watched last year live, that's when Jordan Travis unfortunately broke his leg. Yikes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I'm sure he, he's not a happy camper so far. But it was kind of to be expected. They lost so many into the draft. I was going to say, I mean, they were one of the top teams last year. And I think there was such a letdown after the Georgia Tech game mm -hmm. that I think it's going to be really hard for them to, like, find the motivation to be that top 12 team that you need to be to advance in the, to the playoff. Should they replace DJ? There's already, like, people are like, maybe they should change quarterbacks right now. If DJ doesn't feel like he's pro-ready, take the red shirt and transfer somewhere else because – you're not going to be successful at Florida State. Everything is absolutely falling apart. Yeah. And DJ is a good quarterback, but, I mean, he's been in college forever, though. He has, and that's why I think it's kind of tough. You kind of – I don't know if you use the word weathered, but I don't know that he can help them. And they, I think there's somebody out there that can, but I don't know that DJ, this is a system for I feel him. Like, I feel like DJ would be really good at a, like an SMU-esque kind of school. Yeah. Like something up and coming, like not necessarily a powerhouse squad, but somewhere you can sneak into the playoffs as one of those like, well, we're now power five. But, yeah. you know, something, something else. Kind of like how, um, what's his name? Gary Gilbert. Garrett Gilbert played oh, at yeah. SMU. Shane Bouchelle played at SMU. Tanner Mordecai coming Tanner out of uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. So all these guys like resurrected their careers playing for a school like SMU. So just a thought out there. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, if, if, they, if they lose one more, there is a panic button, if not already pushed, especially for – Oh, I believe the panic button yeah, was for, pushed for, for a while ago. For Florida ago. State, you know. But I think you are right about the letdown of last year, obviously losing players to the draft. And uh, – yeah, things got shaken a little bit sooner than I thought would be. Yeah, definitely. But tell me, what, what excites you most about football season? Man, I, I, I'll say this. Even though you think you can predict things, there's still a lot of unpredictability. Um, Agreed. I, I just love how it brings out the competitiveness among rivals of other, <laughs> you know, pushing your friends that don't, you know, root the same way. Um the up and down, yeah. It's it's so much the energy, even though it leads me to be stressing. Yeah, I feel like you enjoy the drama. Like, you enjoy messing with other fan bases mm -hmm. and, you know, going out. You know, when we're at Harwood Tavern, you like to talk your talk. Like yeah. Whoever is there. <laughs> whoever's there to give you a hard time. Good luck. Uh, I love Thanksgiving. 
It's my favorite holiday. Football, Thanksgiving. It's Amen. part of my family forever, obviously going to Cowboy games. So, yeah, I mean, I just think how festive it is. I mean, when you think fall, you got to think football. Yep. But right now we're in false fall. We are in fall, like a false start. Yeah. All right, I will drink on that. I have no comments. Um, all right. Well, how about we how about we get into it? Let's talk about the matchup: Cowboys Browns this Sunday, three twenty-five our time, four twenty-five Eastern. Um, I think the weather is kind of. 50-50, it looks like. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about severe weather. It's going to yeah. be outdoor stadium. Yeah. But it is early September, so I'm not too worried about it. Like, unless it, like, shit storms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why I'd be, like, a little panicky. But I think it's going to be pretty neutral in terms of, like, climate. Um, expecting a lot of Cowboy fans to show up yeah. in Cleveland, honestly. There are the, there are a lot of Cowboys fans in, in Ohio, from what I've been told. And they're everywhere. They travel. They travel for really sure. well, yeah. Well, and if you're going to have a climate in Ohio or anywhere in the Midwest right now, September is the best time for that. So even if it is some rain, it's still better than come December or November when yeah, it's, it's so negative sure. whatever. I mean, we, play, we play Cincinnati in December, and mm. that's going to be a little rough. I think we're playing in no, Cincinnati, aren't we? No, I think they're here, right? Oh, they're, I don't, I don't know. know. We have to, in December. You know, well, by then, hopefully we'll have a run game. Um, <laughs> no, but this is an exciting opening one, although I will say I was – even though – this may help us a little bit. I, I was hoping to see the return of Nick Chubb just because I really want to see what this defense can be extra tested. But, hey, it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see their defense and what our defense. I think it's going to be the battle of the defenses. I got four words for you. Amari Cooper revenge game. Possibly. It depends on how bitter he feels. I believe he is very bitter, and he's got the quarterback to be able to, like, go off for 100, 150 yards against us. Honestly. Possibly. We don't know what Deshaun Watson has shown up. That's the thing. If I expect Deshaun Watson to look better this year than he did last year. He's had an entire training camp. He's had a off season. He doesn't have a lawsuit looming over his head. He is as close to quote unquote normal as he has been for a while. I will. I'm. You're going to love me for this. I'm going to disagree with you here. Oh, I no. think Deshaun Watson is I, – I think there's going to be a step back. I really, really? do. Yeah, and there, but it's not just physical. It's mental. All that stuff right there you said is, is true, but we don't – emotional toll. And he's still, he's still in the public eye. Fans still call him out. And no matter what, that's not something that – for most people, to it, it's another distraction. If he can be able to do it, we'll see. But right now, and I have to see otherwise to really believe. But what I do think is the saving grace uh, for the Browns is when you have someone like Miles Garrett, you know, and uh, and Amari, and especially um, their tight end Ju. Njoku. Njoku, yeah, he was really good he's last in, year. Also and he's they're, developing. They're back at running back. Ford? Yeah. And he's really good, too. So, like, I think it's going to be a good test for the Dallas Cowboys defense to go up with a speedy, quick guy like uh, like Ford. I forgot his first name, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, and you know, and it gives him that reps because, you know, when you look at what happened with Chubb, I mean, that can take, a, as you know, a while, and, and you need that confidence to know that, that you can. and, like, the magnitude of a player that Nick Chubb is, mm -hmm. you should hold him out until he's absolutely ready. If you rush a player back like Nick Chubb, you're going to lose what makes Nick Chubb Nick Chubb. Well, I don't know if you can, you know, Joe Flacco's not back out there for you to re-grab, and I don't, I don't, unless you go call a Tannehill. He oh, look at that. He got a, his Guinness. He got his Guinness. He wanted a Guinness. He got it. He warmed up. He, he, he's fully, fully invested in the surroundings. Yeah. I mean, you got to be. It's electric here at the Irish Men. Uh, there's quite a few people here, by the way. For there Tuesday. is. It is a busy, busy Tuesday, day after Labor Day. So, yes, yeah, okay, so Cowboys, Cleveland, what do you like about the matchup? What do you don't like about the matchup? Okay, so what I – I'm very curious to see how our offense performs against their defense because mm -hmm. they had a top ten defense last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Am I – Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Um. And they defend the run really well. I don't remember them having super strong DBs, but I remember them having a good D-line. 
Yeah, yeah they've had a pretty solid. I mean, obviously, you know, like we just mentioned, Miles. He's been such a, a, a beast here, but they are good at they are good at stopping the run. Uh, passing that's going to be very interesting. Uh, but the passing is only interesting if Dak is protected. And who knows what Dak's headspace is right now. Like you said with Deshaun Watson, he's got an emotional thing going on. Technically right now, so does Dakota. But the difference in those two is Dakota, no, as we call him his full name, like he's in trouble. Uh, no, I don't think trouble, it would be Dak's Dakota the Prescott. biggest strongest mental mindset guy and here's the reason because he will be there for his team i mean he, he you know he was i remember when he was at state and a couple of days after his mom passed he was there he's not gonna phone it in also you want the big payday no matter what so if you look at goose egg you ain't getting that and um i think he's yeah he may be over the bs but control what you can control and all right. he control and uh he wants to win for his team he's competitive so i'm not too worried about that but I'm interested to see what the pass protection is going to be. You have two rookies. So, you know, while we thought it was somewhat of an upgrade or right direction, we don't know. Yeah, we really don't because we didn't yeah. get to see much of the starters in the preseason either. Yeah. Um, and so they yeah. yanked them early too, Guyton and, and uh, BB. Yeah, so I'm curious to see how our pass protection – stands up against that D-line mm -hmm. because I don't see us running for 100 No, Dottle yards. was just named RB1, by the way, if, if no oh, one saw that. Oh, starting Rico. Yeah, I yeah he's RB1, so, which wow. makes – but it makes sense a little actually because that was the guy getting the most touches in the end. I mean, I think he's kind of – for for what you have proven, he's definitely got more of that speed where, obviously, Zeke's going to be there for the blocking and, and the short down. So, wait, so it's going Dow Zeke – well, I, I didn't see who the number two. I'm just Dalvin? kind of a, no. I don't think they've ca called him up. Okay, so he's still practice squad. Yeah, he's still practice okay. squad. Um, obviously that can change after game one, but yeah, it's Rico and Zeke, um, which I'm fine with right now. I, I think you know, especially he looked last year with Zeke. What was it? How many years? Well, Zeke actually came on really strong in the second half of the season. And I yeah. only know this because I had him in fantasy. And yeah. I needed a running back to fill a void. And he was averaging about 12 to 15 fantasy points a game. Well, then good not to burn him out right away. Like Agreed. We need that blocking, especially now that we do get these rookies. And we know he's a short down. And we were missing that red zone by moving on from him. And I th and that's, uh, I think, perfect right there. So, And audition season for Dattle. Yeah, definitely. Maybe he gets an extension, or at least he will go somewhere and get some money if he can just ball like our, out. Just like the other guy did. Yeah, well, that's how it is. It's, it's an audition for a lot of people. Um, so I would say, okay, prediction-wise, I feel like this is going to be a close one um, because there are a lot of question marks. Yes. I feel on both. I think uh, either by a field goal. I was going to say the betting line currently favors Cleveland by two and a half points. Which, you know, makes sense for being there, and we still don't know the climate. But I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the Cowboys by a field goal. It's going to be Brandon Aubrey, uh, who he's the most sure I am in this game. I'm not confident in our team on the road. I mean, last year we weren't a great road team. Um, and this is their home opener. Mm -hmm. It's the Amari Cooper revenge game. I believe, I, I think Amari's going to pop off for at least 100 yards and two touchdowns. Shot take. Um, what was the shot take? 100 yards plus for Amari plus two touchdowns. I have, my shot take is. The most beautiful route runner in the league, by the way. I'm obsessed with that man. I almost wore my Amari Cooper jersey tonight. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to get one. I it's going to be too offensive. Uh as well. I have a Zeke touchdown. I think we just push him in. That could be an obvious one. Jake Ferguson. See, like in my head, I have a hard time wrapping my head around like us marching down the field and scoring touchdowns right now. Like, that's how – I'm not necessarily a pessimist, but that's how concerned I am about how this offense is set up right now. I the fact that CD didn't do training camp makes me very nervous for this game. He's got no – you know, if they change the playbook, which I'm assuming they might have with certain things, he has no knowledge of that. Um, you're bringing in a brand-new running back with Zeke. 
like not brand new, but I shouldn't have said it like that. But a re, but newer and then what? You've got two under this. new pieces on the offensive line. I am concerned that Dak will not be able to sustain long drives. Do I think Brandon Aubrey is going to kick like five field goals? Yeah, but I don't. I get nervous when you start talking touchdowns. I don't see. I I, I I believe that we're going to see a connection. The reason why is CD has been training. CD, I think CD and Dax just chemistry the way it, it let five. You just know, but also if you don't, you do have if we utilize Brandon Cooks early. There's another one, and then I think you have to trust a Ferguson. Uh, he has proven. I believe Brandon Cooks is actually like on the injury report, isn't he? I haven't seen like an official of whether he's ruled out, but he's not but ruled here, out. But I'm saying he's already having. Well, he Jalen Tolbert, who looked great. Who has looked really good. I mean, he is, I think, your future possible, depending on how the season goes, number two. You know, it's going to like drive me crazy to say this out loud, but why do I feel like special teams is going to be the best unit on the field for the Cowboys? Between In this game or in this off, season? This game. Oh, okay. We're talking about this game. We already talked about the whole season last yeah. game. Yeah. I'm saying in this game, I really think special teams is going to be, is going to have to be. Well, Foss, uh, the best part because you have to make your field goals. Yeah. You're gonna have to punt for field position, and I need to see Kevontae Turpin return some fucking kicks. Well, maybe we'll also see uh, Turpin. Oh, 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 oh! What? All right. Well, so they're gonna keep a question. Hey. But what's beautiful? You got Jalen Turbert. Um, uh, you got Jalen Brooks as well. But Turpin, I would like to see Turpin on the outside, too. See, I think we're going to see a lot of Turpin. Well, with the, like, Turpin and Turpin returns rules. I know, that's such an interesting This should benefit Kevontae Turpin yeah. on these kickoffs. We should be getting good field position with a guy like him. Yeah, I mean, and I believe in Bones. He's he's done a great job with this special well, I team. I do like wings with Bones. Yes, you do. There you go. Bone in all day. Uh <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think the special teams are going to have an impact. Uh, I, I, I do agree there. I mean, that's why I said I think Aubrey's going to, like, if this comes down to win, I, I think for us it, it's because of Brandon Aubrey. Um, but uh, there's it's going to be interesting to see what they they do with some of the wide receiver core in that special teams. We lost some guys. So, but, yeah, Turpin big day. Maybe Turpin runs one back. I would like for that to happen. That's why I'm, like, feeling it. I'm really feeling Dallas special teams this year. Well, that's good. We need that. <laughs> Got to win somewhere. Yeah. You can see Brendan Aubrey kick it, kicking his way into the record books yet again. Yeah, he already had, what, a 70? 66. 66. Sorry, 66. Yeah. Like, up there. Up yeah. there. So you are saying Dallas by three? Yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go to the, Dallas by three. I'm going to go Cleveland by a touchdown. Should be a good one. Someone has to be. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It and is then you what just do is. what last year. You take a shot for three weeks in a row. <laughs> we had a – you know yeah. what? We had a cake schedule last year. We did. We really did. I'm telling you, our show set schedule this year is not as good as it was last year. Next week, we'll see. But one week at a time, Charlie Man. I know, but uh, well, there was some rough patches. That last half of last year was rough. Yeah, everything fell apart. The defense forgot how to tackle. A lot of defenses in the league forgot how to tackle. They started going straight for turnovers instead of stops. Like, it got really messy. Like, you, you even said it in the episode last week. Dan Quinn fell asleep. Yeah, he, he, he checked out. He checked out. And, Once he and the office had, still got all the blame. Yeah. <laughs> Always does. I, I know. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But we'll see uh, who gets the blame or praise in this uh, week one. Hold on. Tanner, what is, what is your prediction for the game? Oh, you're rolling with me. But wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna roll back the tape. You, you mentioned last year. I believe we did win Week One on the road against the Giants. Now this isn't the Giants, yes, but in Giants. But hey, we won we won some they games. They are a on college the football team. Masquerade. I don't even know if they're really a college football team right now. As we'll a pro see. team, that's why they got picked for Hard Knocks Draft Day or whatever the fuck they called it. It is interesting they do that little early like two second. <laughs> How we lose Saquon this episode. <laughs> 
hey, it was really interesting. The Brian Burns trade, really interesting to see how that one came together. But also seeing Daniel Jones and them trying to, like, talk about being like, yeah, he's all, like, manly and rugged and grew out, like, facial hair. I was like, he's still Daniel fucking Jones, okay? <laughs> Tommy yeah, DeVito will be starting Dimes. at quarterback in, like, five weeks. It'll be Dan- fine. Danny Dime, Danny Pennies. Facts. All right, we so like we, Tommy Cutlets. that is our, our Cowboys, ther- not therapy, pre-therapy. It may be a therapy session next week, next probably week. will be. Uh, what are some, let's go into other week one matchups. A lot of great ones. So uh, let's start with Thursday night. Yes. The opener. AFC rematch championship, Ravens, Chiefs. Chiefs again, by the way, getting the opening night as the winner does of the Super Bowl. And they are hosting. They are hosting. Will Taylor Swift be there? I don't is know. She, you're the Taylor Swift fan club. Is she on the tour? I think she's on break right now, actually. All right, then she will be there. I hope so. That'd be so fun. I didn't, That's I her extra advantage. I completely forgot that was a thing, by the way. I should have looked that up. Oh, well, you'll be reminded soon. So, according to the odds, Kansas City is favored by three points, over under 46 and a half to score in the game. Wow, that's a big number of points. Well, they believe in Patrick Mahomes and right. Well, that's the total. Between oh, the that's two the total. Teams. Sorry, uh, but I mean, just the favor. You believe, I mean, it's at home, Arrowhead. You, I mean, Mahomes is just on a whole nother level. And I think there's there's still doubts behind Lamar Jackson, despite you know somewhat getting on their hump, obviously getting into the AFC, but it's not enough for the public eye. It's not an, and I don't. It's not enough for him either. I feel. We'll see what happens also with Mark Andrews. He says he feels good. Yeah, we'll see about Mark Andrews. There. How about Derrick Henry, though? I'm excited to see him. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh oh, shot take from Tanner. I vote yes. Yes. Well, if she's not on tour. If she's not on tour, if she's on will Jason Kelsey be there? Will Jason Kelsey be in the crowd just chugging beers? And well, he has to work Monday night countdown, so he might be there because yes, he doesn't have to work till Monday. Yeah, so he, he has enough to recover. <laughs> I would love to see Jason and Kylie Kelsey. I'm a big fan of Kylie Kelsey. I feel like, though, she kind of backs away from the whole thing because of the rivalry. She's, she's all in for Philly. I love her passion. Yeah, I know, but, like, she, no, but she, she has to keep him on the leash. <laughs> she has to keep him on the leash, one. But, two, she's done more, like, PR stuff this yeah. past summer than before. So I think it's expected for her to be in the public eye. If if Jason's out on these streets, so is Kylie. Oh, no. She's his one-on-one PR person. <laughs> I have a question. So, you know, you got Travis playing in the game. Jason supporting his brother. Kylie supporting her husband, mom and dad supporting Travis. Who's at home with the Kelsey babies? Who is that? Who is that probably, babysitter probably, slash nanny? Probably her. I think her parents live there. So Taylor's? I think, no. Oh, uh, Kylie's. 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 Yeah. Because I think she was Philly girl through and through. So I think her parents are there. I mean, I'm sure they have someone. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm very curious. What would it be like to be Jason Kelsey's nanny slash babysitter? What do you guys think? That's like having another kid, just a big child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch anything. <laughs> Take the tweezer out of the light socket. I uh, can't imagine. Like, I, I think about that. I think about, like, when I'm driving through Highland Park, I think about these nannies and au pairs, and I'm like, what is your life really like? I'm very curious. Ah, uh, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's its own podcast. They should have the nanny podcast. They probably do. We just, yeah. We're just not in that realm, but, which is why I'm having these thoughts. All right, so who do you got? Uh, for Baltimore and Kansas City, um, it's really interesting because last year you had Kansas City open up against Detroit, The Lions, yeah. And the Lions eked out that win. Well, no, Jace, uh, no Travis Kelsey either. It, there game. was no Travis Kelsey. Um, it was the same, essentially, those same wide receivers. Um, this year, I'm very curious to see how they implement a guy like Xavier Worthy, mm-hmm. uh, a.k.a. the fastest man at the Combine. Um, I'm hoping that we get to see a lot more deep balls rather than behind the back or shovel passes for yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Um, also, would love to see more creativity. Like, I know they talked about, like, lateraling the ball. You saw that one play with Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. just winging it. Um, but I think... Drink. Good catch. <laughs> uh, hey, maybe a little but Peyton Hendershot might get a little. 
Is he Baltimore now? No, he's a chief. Oh, chief. Hmm. Interesting. I saw the move. We talked about it, but I forgot where he went. Um. But all of that to say, I think actually this year Kansas City is going to pull off the win at home. I think so too. Uh, I, I think it could be close. I really oh, do. Oh, it's going to be very close. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can you imagine like the animosity between the Ravens and the Chiefs, more so the Ravens? Ravens keep getting kicked out of the playoffs. <laughs> so do you think it comes down to a kick? Speaking of. You want Justin Tucker? You want Justin Tucker oh, versus Harrison Bucker? Ah. Oh, ah. Uh, I will take Justin Tucker all day, every day. I do like Justin Tucker. Will he Tucker, sing to me? I really hope so. This, I say a touchdown. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot. Um, I'm going to go with you. Just because yeah. how fireworks and intense and, and, and just kind of you saw the meltdown in that second half. Yeah, I want to see. Ravens. Yeah, you're right. I want to see if that emotional maturity comes back mm. for Zay the Ravens. Flowers, year or two. Um. Yeah, that guy, Zay Flowers, really good. Zay Flowers. Zay Fla- I remember, okay, now it's all coming back to me. The Zay Flowers throw the temper tantrum, yeah. the flag, and then the game going downhill from there. Now I remember. Yeah, they they let themselves beat themselves, I think, in that. Not not taking away from Chiefs. That's what having someone experience like Mahomes, and then, you you know, it's going to happen. But, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to go Chiefs. What are you going to go? I'm going Chiefs, yeah. Tanner, you got an opinion? All right. All the stars are aligned. Let's talk about this real quick because – as someone who has been to Brazil, I'm hearing all these things about this big game in Brazil on Friday, Green Bay, Philadelphia. They basically sat down the players and gave them a whole list of do not. Oh, I saw that. I was, or I was listening to that on die. the fan. Yeah. Um, so fun fact, when I used to work in hospitality, travel, and tourism, part of my job required me to go to Sao Paulo. Mm. I only went to Sao Paulo once. But it was, one, the most fun week of my life. And, two, I also was sat down and given the same speech back then. And that was 2017, 2018. Wow. Um, What are your thoughts on, yes, the NFL is expanding the game globally, but at what cost for these players? Yeah, I mean, there's it's definitely – there can be somewhat a slippery slope. I mean, if you have to have rules, that's never a good thing. But, I mean – we have seen with other sports. We have seen the Olympics. We have seen with um, UFC. UFC as well. This year. And, I mean, un- I hate to say this. Oh, I'm just saying it's unfortunate that it has to be like that. But I feel like the, the NFL will do a good job to make sure these play. They're there for one thing only, to play a game. You know. One of the rules I heard is that they're not supposed to be wearing green, but both teams' main color is green. And they, Oh, and be careful of text, certain texts you get. I heard that. Like well, just, yeah. spam, you know, just be careful. Don't have your phones out. There's a lot of these safety, but I feel like the NFL will take care of them. I mean, it, it sucks that have to be so strict, but I do think at the same time it's exciting though the NFL is expanding a little bit. I mean, it's really cool to play in a place like Brazil. Uh, however, you know, if anything goes wrong, like. But it's trouble. Can, you know, but things can go wrong when they but go overseas, too. Like, I'm just saying you can expand to safer countries. Why Brazil? When you know Brazil is such a, a risk. I, I think they're the money. Yeah, is there's the money? right money. Yeah. Do they get a lot of money out of Brazil, really? Like, I'm... There's, I mean, there's money anywhere where you're going to, you know, try to kind of really push and, and expand. And, I mean... I mean, I mean let's in that be case, send them to Saudi Arabia. I mean, there, but there's, there, let's be honest, there's rough cities in America that you, and we've seen it. You know, uh, I'm fine with it as long as they have the safety precautions, and I think the NFL will take care of them and, ma- and make sure. Um, just watch going in most of these games, like how secure. Um, and I think the last thing we need is our these players, anyways, getting out and going around. I mean, it, it, like I said, you're playing a game, get in. You know, hopefully it sparks some interest. If not, it's a one and done. Um, okay, well, on that note, Packers and Eagles is yes. actually a really good matchup. So if you're going to have yeah. a game on display in another country, that's it's definitely a good, a good one to have. Yeah, no, it is. Talk about two passionate franchises and teams. Uh, interesting because both are cold cities. <laughs> going to get some warmth. Uh, who do you got? I got Packers. Right now, Philly is favored by three. Mm. And 
I think I'm actually going to roll with Philly. Philly has a lot of ground to make up for what happened last year with them crashing and burning towards the end of the season. Green Bay is kind of riding a high, going to the playoffs, kicking the shit out of Dallas, you know. So they probably feel really effing good about themselves. They had a good camp, whatever. But I feel like Philly's got a new coaching staff that needs to prove themselves. They're in another country. Which could be a deterrent, but I'm seeing this as a as a positive thing, and I can definitely see Philly winning in a very close game. Well, my, my concern, too, is they lost Broadbury. For, that's huge on their defense, and I think their defense has taken a step back. I don't see it getting better with Vic. It doesn't look good two years in a row you're switching corners. It comes down to Nick Sirianni. We'll just say it right here. Um, yeah, I, I think no matter what, it will be a close win, but I'm not all, all yet – impressed by what Philly because it starts with the coach who was a big reason I think for their unraveling. Spoken like a true Cowboys fan. I think it's just spoken like what I saw and watched. I don't it. like I don't like Nick Sirianni either, so I'm I'm with you. And other and I've talked to Philly fans who feel the same. They're they're getting out on him, so it's a must win for him season. So Yeah, but I can definitely see them taking at least this game. Uh rest of the season to be decided. Yes. But game one in Brazil I could see that. Okay. Um, any other good matchups? I'm scrolling through the schedule. Lots of division matchups. Debut of Caleb Williams against Tennessee. I mean, that's going to be fun to watch just because all eyes on him. You know, the all promise job. Um, ooh, here's a revenge game. Uh L.A. Rams and Detroit Lions. Yeah. Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford. QB swap. A healthy and a healthy uh, Matt Stafford right now. He seems to be doing good. Also, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. Like, I'm excited. I, I think don't sleep on the Rams. I know. I think we both have them as wild card teams. Yeah, both as a wild card. There's a little bad taste, too, in the Rams' mouth after that playoff. There was that, that late, that hit, that chop right at the knee. Uh, was it on, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Hawk, not Hawk. Hilby. Oh, Higby. 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 Took him out. Um, there's some rivalry. I think there's some tension there. I'm excited. I'm all for it. Yeah, that's your Sunday night matchup, so that's probably going to be one of the top games of the, the weekend, I believe. Where, well, where is it in? Uh, so they are playing in Detroit, and Detroit is favored by four. I may give Detroit, being at home there, Dan Campbell knows he's got to come out fiery as long as he don't gamble. Sean McVay needs to get his McVay status back. He needs a win. You're going Rams? All right. All right. And then last thing I want to touch on, Aaron Rodgers, back from the Achilles injury, expected to start week one, Monday night football against the San Francisco 49ers. Back on a Monday night football again. <laughs> I know. I feel like they're torturing him. I yeah. Just, I just, there was some stat about that, about how many quarterbacks on a Monday night have gotten hurt. Um, hopefully, for his case, it doesn't happen. Obviously, there's been some team drama, apparently, as we talked about. And, by the way, San Francisco is only favored by four and a half. I feel like that's such a – Conservative spread. I feel like it should have been bigger. Which is Trent Williams going to be playing though? Is he? Yes, gonna get... they said today. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I he didn't see his contract. Okay. Good. And he's for, working for towards a week one start. Yep. I go Niners. I'll go Niners on this one. It should be Niners, and if the Jets win, then everyone's going to be high as fuck. They're going to be the like Jets. the Jets win in the Super Bowl. Exactly. We know that all too well. Yeah. Um. Anything else you want to say for week one? Any? Man. Anything you want to plug for week one? Well, you know, we'll get our fantasy football underway, so let that stress start. You know, I got the fourth pick, you got the fifth pick. We're going to be Heck sniping yeah. each other back Heck and forth yeah. in this draft. Heck yeah. No. Yeah. We'll give you guys all the details of how it goes down okay. in our fantasy football league over the course of the season. Strategy, because people, you know, text me their, their rosters, you know, what did you think? Roasted. And I was like, actually, I mean, a lot of them. I've been pretty good. Great, my draft. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, I was like, usually mine sucks. Um, what is your strategy usually? I'm not telling you. You're the only I know. The I see. I was hoping she would. That was that was sneaky. I would never. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, also, I'm in a pick 'em too. Oh, I like me pick too. Em. I'm yeah. not playing in a pick 'em league also. So we'll see what happens. Are you picking like straight wins and losses, or are you picking against the spread? Straight wins and losses. So we're picking against the spread. Yeah. So I will be doing all the betting commentary weekly, if you haven't noticed. Man, it's here. Football is Are you ready for some football? Here. I'm excited. 
there, there we go. go. Um, or Carrie Underwood? No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do love Carrie Underwood. Who do they bring in? They brought in somebody new for Monday Night Football, didn't they? Morgan Wallen? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Luke Holmes? Luke, Luke Holmes can do it. Oh, I think that's who it is. It is Snoop. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. I love Snoop. He's everywhere. He's uh, America's favorite he uncle is. right now. Um, no, excited. Football's back. Let the stress begin. Okay, just to recap, three shot takes were thrown out today. One, is Taylor Swift going to be in attendance on Thursday night? Yeah. Two, Amari Cooper going for 100 yards receiving and at least two touchdowns. And three, a touchdown by Zeke and a touchdown by Fergie Fresh. Yep. All right. Those are, but we got to get with how stacked the weekend is. We might as well start off. Yeah, let's with roll. Let's jump right in. Why you never left? All right, next week we're going to be over in my neck of the woods, the Village Dallas, for over under for Monday night football. So oh, comes, we are doing over under? Yeah, yeah. So we will be at over under Monday night football. Come stop by. Come say hi. We'll see how many snaps Aaron Rodgers gets to play. <laughs> It'll be fun to watch, but thank you. Check us out. We're again. BoringTakes.com. It'll link you to all the channels that we publish on and our social media handles. Anything else I'm forgetting? Also, stop by Intrinsic this Saturday. See our boy Tanner. I saw him this Sunday at Harbin Arms. He will be with DMT at Intrinsic Brewing downtown Garland. If you love tunes from the 90s, 80s, current, check them out. Sounds good. All right, till next week, thoughts and prayers to all you Cowboy fans.